what a journey. In Deep Connections, I became aware that communication is fundamental to human consciousness. Then I became aware that the connection I am seeking is deeper than conversation or communication with my friends and family. I also seek a connection with ultimate reality. I pursue this connection through the practices of deep listening and deep breathing. I am now delivered to a point where the mystery of consciousness and the consciousness of mystery meet. How do I engage this ultimate entanglement as an awake being? How do I engage in the relational practice of deep talk? Well, you seem to have raised the right question, and I have an answer. I borrowed it from Madison Avenue. Just do it. Just begin, and begin now. All by myself. This practice only happens all by myself, even if you are surrounded by 10,000 people. Don't I need some special words or chants or rituals or liturgy or secret poetry? Any or all of these things may eventually be helpful. For now, keep it simple, keep it personal, just you and the ultimate reality. Just you and the primary relationship that has always been and will always be your primary relationship. Thinking too much will get in the way of a real connection. It is a sort of paradox. I have to use my head to get out of my head to get into my life. I have the sense that um, living my everyday life is something that I feel um, uh, this connection in a way that is, it's always, you know, it's kind of like the hidden mystery. You know, we can see what is around us, but somehow, and, and even throughout ancient times, people have sensed that there's something a little beyond, that, there, that there's a hiddenness about a reality that's beyond, just beyond what we can see. Sometimes we call it a veil, you know, like the veil is be, it's beyond the veil. <laughs> and so I trust that there is a, uh, that there is a, a, this source, this mystery that is sacred to me, um, that it is there. And some, we, you know, it's, it's like dealing with why am I here? Why do I even exist? Well, why does anything exist? Um, and I trust that there's a, a, a creative energy at the source of that. For me, what I feel is a, a sense of longing and a yearning to be connected, to know that I'm not alone in the universe. Despite everyone around me sometimes and I can still feel alone, I also feel that, that my, my interior, my inner landscape is, is reaching out for a deeper sense of connection. And I, I think I've always felt that there's something uh, beyond, uh, beyond what I can see, beyond my senses. It, it's like a, a lifting of my heart and my, my desire uh, for that connection, for that relationship. Um, and I find a place where I can rest in, in that sense of knowingness and, and a sense of love and, and care um, that I can sometimes feel and believe in. Um, and so that kind of reaching out, um, it, it, all, it all comes down to relationship. There are many ways to pray. And I think growing in a deep spirituality is about discovering all the different ways that we can connect deeply with 
that which we have no words for, right? The great mystery, this ultimate reality that is so hard to describe. Entanglement theory basically says that if you have uh, one of these itsy bitsy little particles, these invisible things, but you smash them together and you bust it up and one part goes uh, out into the universe that way and another part goes, and this was a, a unity until it, it got busted up. They go off in different directions, sometimes uh, 70 or 80% of the speed of light, boom. Whatever happens to this one particle out here in some part of the universe is gonna happen at, to this other particle at precisely the same time. And if you put some spin on this one for some reason, this one's gonna spin too. If you put some reverse spin on it, it's gonna reverse too at the same, at the same precise moment. because it's entangled. It's still one reality. Time and space have collapsed. This is still one reality. And what they're figuring out now, these, these smart folks, these physicists and scientists and whatever, they're figuring out that this is not only just true on the itsy bitty little micro level, but it seems to be true on the macro level as well. We are all entangled uh, with stuff. I mean, we get entangled with our jobs, we get entangled with our, our spouses, with our kids, with the houses we live in and the pets. We, we get entangled. And the way you know if you're entangled with something is when somebody takes it away and you have a reaction. Now, if they take it away and there's no reaction, then you probably weren't very entangled. So I don't need to find my special connection with ultimate reality. I already have it or it already has me. We're entangled. Yes, yes, you are entangled. I am entangled. We are entangled, now and forever. The only question is, do I choose to become conscious of the ultimate entanglement that I am and do I choose to practice and nurture this truth always at the very core of my existence. I believe that the ultimate role of the spiritual life and the interior life is to move us beyond the ritualistic. I think, I, I was in a, in a plane that was uh, on the way to Japan and uh, some years ago and was looking as if we were going to have to make a crash landing because they couldn't get the, the wheels down. And so you can imagine the, I'm, I'm glad to have had the experience, but I'll tell you it is an experience because you know that, that this could be the end. And um, some people afterwards, as, as if this would come up in a conversation as it is now, would say something like this, what, what happened to you? Did, did you see your whole life? Did you, um, what, what prayers did you pray? And I said, what? What prayers did you say? I said, I, I didn't say a prayer, I became a prayer. That's the best language I have for it. These, the, the, the practices and the beautiful, beautiful um, pieces of, of liturgy or ritual or the mantra, they're all wonderful. They are marvelous. I wouldn't discount any of them, but their, own, their purpose is very limited. You should outgrow them, and you will outgrow them. The, the purpose is to bring you back to consciousness when, this, when it sucks you in, when, when Disneyland shushes you out of your spiritual self, then if you make, a, if, if you make the kind of promise every time, I drive around town a lot, so every time I go by a, a stop sign, I'll say the Jesus prayer, by Jesus' mercy, good. But someday, if, you, if it really uh, permeates your internal life like water in a garden, uh, the flowers will come and go from season to season. But you will never ever assume that getting that flower is the only thing you will appreciate in that garden. See, you grow beyond 
These are, these are all crutches, they're aids, they're what we should have and religion should supply them. And if you don't have a religion, then make it up. Find a wisdom figure, uh, grapple with the word, uh, learn to paint, to, to find your own interior, do anything that works. But remember that the sign that it works will be that someday you will no longer need it. I didn't say a single prayer. I became a prayer. I was ready. I was, re I was very calm. I just sat there and said, well, it's, perhaps it has all been for this moment. Ah. I sort of get where Sister Joan is going with all of this, but I am not quite there yet. I think I need to use some of these crutches she mentions in order to give some order to my interior world. Let me suggest some entanglement beads. Okay, what is an entanglement bead? An entanglement bead is simply a crutch, an aid that can help us connect with the deep. These practices or methods may use words, even special words in liturgy, or rituals, or icons and images, or music, songs, chants, or art, or incense and smells, or other tools or techniques that can assist in moving us beyond the personality self or ego self. These aids can be transparent to the deep, they can allow us to see through a finite reality into the infinite. They can nurture our consciousness of the presence of the infinite and ultimate reality already here in the midst of our personal finite lives right now. Do they work? They work as well as practice works to accomplish anything of value. Okay, so where do we start? Let's consider seven entanglement beads human beings have been using to order consciousness since our ancestors first crawled out of a cave. And beneath your knowing and doing, is, of course, something called being. Now, being, your being, doesn't even take your mind. Being your being is, in a way, like doing nothing. Uh, it's, it's your consciousness being your consciousness. It's your consciousness surrendering to being the consciousness that you are. And so this kind of experience of infinite silence, as we sometimes call it in meditation, is an experience of your consciousness being itself uh, in the context of being the whole part of the wholeness of being uh, that your consciousness is being. Well, there's something very similar about you and me as, as human beings, but of course you're specific history and, and specific biology and genetics and so forth, it's all unique. Uh, but I'm using the category being as something we have in common. Uh, and it's our consciousness is our being in the arena of being conscious of the consciousness itself and of all of its struggling. So wherever your consciousness is struggling, that's your being and to be conscious of that being it's not just ideas in your head that you're conscious of, although those were possibly reflecting your, your being, but your being is a deeper experience. Your consciousness, being conscious of your consciousness, and the mind can begin working with it, but it's not the mind you're, you are when you're conscious of your consciousness. You become more conscious and more conscious of your consciousness, and, and your consciousness changes at every minute of your life and you make him more mature at living from your consciousness and all that kind of thing. Uh, but your consciousness is very similar to my consciousness and it's something created by your creator. It's not something you invented. Uh, being a conscious being is one of the miracles of your existence.
uh, to which you had nothing whatsoever to do, and you're a member of a species that is conscious in the way that you can be conscious, uh, it's very different from other species. So this interior self is that, is that self in search of the great ideas, the great consciousness, the word, and, and living a very decent and dignified life. In the first place, one of the things that uh, this world lacks is silence. Uh, 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 a, a monastery like this is built around silence. It's not a rigid silence. It's not a, a, a condemning silence. It's not an unkind silence. It's a reflective silence. It's silence that gives you the right and the space to move inside yourself instead of forever being distracted outside yourself. This sixth century document says in its, its final uh, degree of humility, be serene, it's, it's okay. Just, just live, you know, live easily, live well. Have a relationship with your God. Have a relationship with wisdom. Know yourself, be honest about yourself. Put down the state of stuff. And then the very last, that, the last four degrees is be good to others. And then he says, if you do all that, you will be very serene and you'll have a very good life. And I tell you that it is true. It is that simple and that good. I think 99 times and find nothing. I stop thinking, swim in silence, and the truth comes to me. Stillness and tranquility set things in order in the universe.